Hey guys, welcome to Bubble Man's World, uh, episode four here. Cooking with Merlin. We've got a new friend. Would you like to introduce our new friend, Merlin? This is my buddy Paul. We go from way back. He's been working in the cannabis space alongside me and probably one of the true head reps out there that smokes more weed than the rest. Trying to keep the culture dabs. alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. He had dabs from a good friend of mine, so that was a good sign right off the bat. He's got this yeah. beautiful little piece here. Who's this piece by? JT Glass. JT Glass. The Opal Scope got it from Drip Glass in Edmonton. Right, yeah, shout those guys out. You're yeah. saying you always get good uh, deals from that. Good deals from Drip Glass, folks. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so you're twisting one up. And we also made some Halloween gourd dab rigs. Well, Halloween Halloween <laughs> gourd dab rigs. So this is the Pickle Rick Blender gourd gourd dab rig. Oh, I like how you shave the bottom off so they're not uh, gonna break. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Attention to detail is key. <laughs> Dude, you guys are hilarious. Paul came over, we were going to get the food, and he's like, I'm going to make a dab rig out of a pumpkin. And <laughs> lo and behold, they're sold out of pumpkins. Oh my god. Yeah. So we went for the next option, oh. a butternut squash, and it gave us inspiration for one of our dishes as well. All right. We're going to make a butternut squash soup. Butternut squash soup is the first course of today's meal, yeah. and that's awesome. Well, I'm down with uh, maybe taking a little dab. Yeah. Here you go. What, uh, do you do this thing for like 15, 20 seconds and let it cool for 30 or 40 or? I generally do cold starts. Just cold starts, okay, yeah, well, that's what I'll do. Cold, yeah, keeps it nice and simple and that way you can guarantee you're gonna have a great time. Okay, I like your style. Normally cold Marcus start. is the most prepared man ever. Today he forgot all of his equipment. It's happened already <laughs> twice now though, <laughs> out of two times. Well, like if you think of it. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Get on this well, that's edge. what they say, right? A friend with me is a friend indeed. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, okay, well, cold starts, here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna bang one up too. Yeah, let's all jump in there. Yeah. A cold start action. Sometimes I like to heat up the part that's away from where it's sitting. Shout out to Jameson for, I think this is one of his treats. Oh, nice. Yes, it is. Jameson's the best. It's definitely a must visit in Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> you got a nice little crew in Calgary. It's yeah, probably you're part of the Jameson's crew in Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> Dave. Yeah, Dave. Shout out to Dave, Dave Auger. Those guys are doing some great work at Big League. They've, they're bringing fire to the market, and that's what we need up here, right? Yeah, they're doing great things in both cannabis and the mushroom space right now. For sure. So, yeah, we're definitely uh, stoked to always pay attention to what they're doing. Shout out to Chris and Jordan and my fun guy. Start schmear this stuff is like it smells pretty good too. Actually. Check that out. Mm, very nice. A little orangey flavor to it. Well, the rosin world really opened things up. I'll be honest, you know. Before rosin, all my friends that were of the persuasion of BHO, which I know you appreciate some nice BHO, my friends that smoke BHO. They just never, we never had, like they would smoke my hash, I was just like, oh, I don't smoke BHO. But now what I find is that most people that have an appreciation for BHO will also have rosin in their stash. Oh, for sure. It's all about having a diverse offering, That's right? That's nice. I, I think it's hilarious. That. Yeah. <laughs> you just ripped it? Yeah. <laughs> Pickle Rick blended. That's awesome. Well, I figured you probably blended the soup too, didn't you? Yeah. I'm going to be doing some double blending. Oh yeah, so Merlin did a little bit of preparation today because it would have been literally an hour more of time to prepare what he did. So once we get into the kitchen, 
he'll kind of go over a little introduction in what he's already done. And we'll make sure that when we give you guys the recipe, if you want to try and, um, you know, recreate these dishes for your own uh, selves and families and friends, uh, he'll, we'll get the recipes put up the best that we can. Yeah, I'll try and put the best directions I can on the, on the recipes. And if you have any questions, just hit it in the comments and totally. we'll be sure to answer you. But it's nice. Yeah. This guy's just like... The How much is this? Do we? Oh, just on the sea. Put yeah. salt, salt the water, and it's the ocean. <laughs> and then I think the number one question is going to be: Do you do birthday parties? <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. Uh, special appearance from Marcus and Merlin to cook some, cook some food and smoke some weed. Oh yeah. yeah. That'd Absolutely. be a, that'd be a fun little lift session. Yeah, definitely. That would be a fun little lift session. It's nice. This is so far so good. Four episodes. I'm excited to see what we do today. Merlin's got his um, sights set high in regards to the levels of elevation. Are we announcing what we're going to do yet? Or yeah, I mean, so far we've been doing a lot of comfort food, and today we're going to kind of elevate it a little bit. So we're going to do three courses. So we're going to start with uh, with the butternut squash soup, and then we're going to go to uh, beet tartare, and then we're going to finish with scallops, uh, creamed corn, and a uh, bar blanc sauce. So for those of you that think you heard beef tartare, he <laughs> did say beet yes. with a T, as in the root vegetable. Yeah. The beet tartare. I remember the first time he told me we're having beef tartare, I was like, oh, I'll just skip that. <laughs> and then he like served it up, and I was like, you were there. Yeah, yeah it was delicious was on like, that avocado oh, bed. Dude, yeah. I was looking my Yeah, plate Paul's a regular at our, at our dinner table as well. We like to get the homies together and have dinners on a regular basis. Yeah, like I was, I was saying earlier, I'm generally kind of a picky eater, uh, you know, stick to heavy meat and potatoes, but... I will eat anything Merlin puts in front of me. I mean, that'd just be silly not to widen your horizons. Uh, I feel the same way. I'm not as much of a picky eater. I think now, as I've gotten older, I'm pretty willing to try anything, at least that's within the scope of my diet. Yep. Yeah. Which I don't really have a, a title for. You know, I eat some fish, I eat some seafood. I don't, generally, I don't eat birds and red meats, but um, I don't think there's a real... No, I can, I can keep it pretty fucking. I was brought up a vegetarian. My parents are hippies. My parents, yeah. You brought awesome. them actually. They've been to your house. Hopefully, one day they can do an episode. With yes, us. they're actually uh, coming out here in December. So. so that's the episode. Yeah, we should we'll film an episode <laughs> with your parents. Yeah, the old hash guy. My dad has worked on hash farms in the '70s uh, in, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, nice. This crazy stories before the Dude, Soviets. Dude, he's gonna yeah. tell us the audience <laughs> some stories yeah. while you're cooking. Your dad's. Gonna I was tell just telling Paul stories. about like my dad's old stories about. Uh, Double zero hash. Oh right? yeah, hundred yeah. kilos for one kilo. That's the true double zero, right? Totally. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the true skunk man Sam dry sip ninety nine point nine 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 percent heads, and that was like ten grams per kilo. Wow. Ten grams per kilo. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, one percent. That's where the fire is. That's triple zero. <laughs> I don't know. It was definitely the strongest product I've ever consumed. And where was that? Life. That was in Amsterdam. Yeah, the first time, yeah. Yeah, I left cross-eyed. I used to hear people tell stories of leaving his house cross-eyed, and I'd be like, how, Sweet. how high can you be? <laughs> and how high can you get? I tripped out pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, and then I smoked his hash, like a lot of it. Because he kept just giving me bomb rip after bomb rip after bomb rip. Like, I'm certain that night he hit 50 or 60 bomb rips. Wow. I'm certain I hit probably around 20. And that was, like, a lot. And I remember leaving there just being like, ooh, trying to kind of get my way home from the area of Amsterdam that he lived in. Bikes flying everywhere. Yeah, I was just like, oh, my God. Just driving, trying to, like, not get my tires stuck in a tram track. Fall into the canal. Falling into the canal was never a problem, but the tram tracks are deceiving and if you don't pay attention to them and you, you don't cross them properly and you go like one's going the same way as you and you go into it, it's, uh, it can get ugly fast. How many years did you live there? Uh, I didn't live there for any years, but I traveled there like 40 or 50 times for sure wow. since 95. Lots cool. of trips to Amsterdam, yeah. It's a great place for sure. I've yeah. only been twice, but both memorable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I probably spent almost a year in Amsterdam if I added up. Yeah, yeah, if I added up all my time, maybe maybe more. I don't know. It's uh, definitely a cool city. 
I've never had the pleasure. Oh, well, one day soon here, man. I'm sure it'll all... It's crazy. The world will open up again one day soon, and one can only hope, and when it does, traveling will be afoot. Traveling is there, but just these vaccine passports that are... Yeah, but that's not really opening it up. I just mean once it's opened back up. I mean, yeah, for I everyone, just free yeah, for all, like it used to go back to. I suspect we won't live like, um, like under a medical emergency or a health. Yeah, go care. back to yeah. normal, like just. Yeah, yeah. or somewhat. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of normal. Maybe maybe even normal could be a bit different because a lot of the systems we're currently operating on are like faulty, broken, and just need replacing. Mm-hmm. There's always room for improvement. Right? Yeah. There is. I like the way uh, Greta would say about the system. She's like, well, if the system is not working, you replace the system. Yeah. Don't try to fix the system. Just replace it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm ready to do some replacing. I mean, that's it. I mean, what it's done for the workplace as well. Like, you shouldn't have to go to do a nine-to-five job anymore unless you're, you know, unless you're working physical physical labor job most of the jobs that mm-hmm. it was just taking emissions for nothing people driving to work oh I know well, you're, you're, you're more productive at home too right I mean think about these commutes right some people spend an hour in hour out of the city that's oh, two yeah. more hours of work yeah yeah or dabbing it's true yeah. or dabbing <laughs> I like how you think dude <laughs> well let's uh, maybe think about getting into the kitchen and start this Cook little uh, cooking video I like it I'm excited it. Me too. awesome all right we're doing it merle just called uh, paul in to be the sous chef as always i will be behind the camera giggling away and enjoying myself let's uh let's get to it boys all right we've already done a little bit of prep for today uh, i saw you just fill the pepper yeah filled up the pepper mill because we use pepper in pretty much everything gotta get that beta carry off man. that's <laughs> right <laughs> so good man. So we have a, a pot heating up. We'll start with the, the soup. Put a little bit of olive oil in there. And we'll, I, you didn't see it, but on, on camera, but earlier I made uh, some butternut with some curry, with some cayenne pepper, with, uh, or not curry, sorry, with cumin powder, and uh, with a little bit of salt, pepper, olive oil garlic and ginger and then roasted it all in the oven at 420 degrees oh 420 degrees yeah that's Ooh. what's up and it's pretty much ready right now so we got a nice little crisp roast flavor to the butternut squash Ooh, that looks like perfect yeah so we got the butternut squash and we got the hot pan we got the onions in there I got a little bit of translucent, get some flavor stuck to the bottom of the pan there. A bit of salt, a bit of pepper. <clears throat> and you can see in here they're kind of hidden because they kind of took on the color, but there's like roasted garlic in here. There's roasted pieces of ginger in here. And all that flavor is like trapped inside, and it's all going to be here. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we'll pick up this up once these are... Once these are flavor final. trapper. Flavor trapping, exactly. Dude, tell me about that, uh, speaking of flavor trapping. <laughs> Did you uh, talk about the mustache? Tell me about your mustache, bro. Yeah, I know, it's, uh... <laughs> My girl loves the mustache and it's also Movember, so you know we'll put a little bit of support. I've actually had a few friends with prostate cancer, so better off to support than not. Hell yeah, dude. look like a dirty porn star, so. Dude, <laughs> it's fucking slick. Or like a plumber or a cop or something. Do you find it's better for the... <laughs> do you find it's better for sniffing turps? It can, it gets stuck in there and you kind of like, you know, air it out and then you get the right smell. <laughs> this flavor filter. All right, Paul, you want to start by putting those into the blender right over there? Cool. Use one of these. Yeah, it pulls it up. We got on top of it here. Is it the beets? The beets. That's great. Now you want to stop it once or once or twice. Move it around. 
scrape the walls off so you can get a nice consistent beet. I'd rather eat this than the beef tartar to be honest. It's so much more fun. Oh my god, if you just ground up beef. The color of the sun shining through it, too, is it's just like there. so good, man. Yeah. Look at that. You'll see it'll be a super vibrant dish when it's all done. I bet. You want to stir the onions over there for me, Paul? Yes, sir. Can we do some onion stirring? So now we have these ground up. Yeah, now that we have these ground up, We'll get them into this pot right here. Wow. There we go. Now, we're going to hit it with a little bit of lemon. We're going to hit it with a little bit of olive oil. And it'll give it a really nice shine, if you can see. Ooh, could you drop it down a bit into the sun? There you go. Really nice, makes it a nice shine on it. Yeah, it really does. You can use all sorts of different oils. I've done it with pistachio oil. A little so pinch of salt. A little pinch of pepper. Now this is where the real flavor for this part comes in. It's with a few capers. You're really preparing food for all of the senses, even beyond the palate. Yeah, I mean, I, it's nice to have different textures and flavors that kind of bind together. It makes the dish better in the end. Once you kind of understand that, everything kind of flows, right? So chop up your capers a little bit. How are those onions coming, Paul? They're coming along great. Get nice and brown. Nice. Let's just reduce the heat a little bit on there. Get our capers in there. You want to get this to, to marinate a little bit is why I'm getting this one done first. Get the capers in and then this is the part that really adds a little nice kick to it is some horseradish. A little horseradish, a little hoss and pfeffer. Exactly. Get all that mixed in there. We're so close to having the sun shining in it, but it's just not quite there. I think we're right here if we I can think get so. it. Oh, yeah. The color is great. It's worth doing for, honestly, because it was just in the shade and it didn't have that. Yeah. It's so vibrant. So vibrant red. It's super vibrant, dude. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So now that that's marinating, we'll just let that sit. You want to try it? Make sure that you're the taste tester here. Cheers, man. Cheers. That was after a flavor explosion. Woo! That's very, very good. Now we'll get these squashes up here. Butter nut. All grilled up and mashed, ready to go. It's about uh, 15 to 20 minutes at 420 degrees in the oven. And it gets nice and soft. And then what did you put on there? You said you put ginger, you put garlic. Yeah. Whole ginger, whole garlic. I put cumin. I put a little bit of cayenne pepper. A little bit of olive oil. All of it. So now you can see where it's going to get a nice coating in the bottom there. You know, I think we're going to spice this in a little bit as well. Get a little bit of wine in there and get that body flavor really up. You want to like burn it to the bottom almost. It's getting there. I would say, yeah. Stir that all up and boil that out. That's just absorbed, huh? Then we'll get a little bit of veggie stock in here. I like to take the stuff with no salt so that you can adjust it yourself after. Get that going. Now we'll turn up the heat on here to see it boiling. One little extra thing we'll add to that. This is like cooking with action, splashes and all. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
a little bay leaf in there. Just remember to take the bay leaf out before you blend it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we're going to blend this. I just want these flavors. We'll make to sure we mention that again. Sit together, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely very, very important. You don't want to eat sharp bay leaf. So, usually when we make a bunch of courses like we're about to do, we serve them one after another. Today, it's all going to be about timing. So, soup's going. I think the next part we're going to do is the bar glass sauce because it takes about 15 minutes to make. So want to get a bit of time. So a little pot on there, medium heat. We're going to get some olive oil right here. So what is a, a, bar, a blah blah sauce? <laughs> it's a bar blend, which would mean white butter sauce. Cool. You know, like on fish a lot of the time, you'll see, you'll see like a yellowish white sauce. Yep. And it's really going to go well with this. And you're sauce. calling it bar blanc? Bar blanc. Bar blanc. Yeah. It's like meaning white butter. It's a classic French sauce, and it's going to go really good with the corn and with the scallops. It's going to be delicious. Cool. Yeah, so we'll just let that heat up a second. Um, while that's happening, we'll make the avocado mix here. So, um, what we're going to do, I cut up these avocados already. And yep. I, I put a little bit of lemon on them so that it would preserve it and it stays the color. Mm-hmm. So we'll yeah, you squeeze like half a lemon under them, eh? Exactly. It just preserves the, with the acid, it preserves it, right? So it kept them from forever. browning out completely. Yeah, exactly. I'll just scrape with that, that nice in. green color. Oops. We're going to go two full, there's two full avocados here. For four people, I would suggest about two full. Yeah, Maybe put a little bit more lemon. The oh, avocado has an amazing good. texture to the dish. It sure does. Yeah. And this time I'm gonna go with a little bit of dill extra in there as well. Usually people put cilantro, but I like dill in a lot of things. It's super powerful like an herb. What's the terpene on the dill? I'm not sure. Top of my head. I'm sure, it's got a nice variety of them. For sure. I mean, it's it's so strong. pungent. Yeah. Put a little bit of that in there. Let's see. Yeah, look at there. A little bit of salt and pepper. Super simple for the avocado. Simple is better with Mexican food. <laughs> I don't know if I consider this Mexican, but this bottom part of the Semi guac, definitely. Is. We'll just mash it all up. Give it, a, give it a good mash. You know, I'm gonna add a little bit of fat in there and put a little bit of olive oil. Is it that nice shine? And you want to get it mashed a little bit because when we're gonna put it into the molds after, it'll just be easier to work with. That's why you're not mashing it completely. Yeah, I want still want big chunks. Yeah. But I want it like mashed enough that it's kind of like emulsified. Yeah. We'll let that just sit there for right now. While this is hot now, we get our shallots in here. What did you have? Just a bit of oil in there? Yeah, just a little bit of olive oil. Okay, you got your shallots going. Now we're gonna add a little bit. Once this these get a little translucent. Get it done with a little bit of salt as well. Just so everyone knows, if it looks like I'm putting a lot of salt, it's kosher salt I'm always using. It's a lot more granular, a little less salty, a lot easier to salt stuff. Pretty much all I use. Um, that's a little bit of salt. I'll sweat those onions out a bit. Or shallots, I should say. Then we will get a little bit crazy with this one. I'm gonna put some white wine. We're going to put some white wine vinegar. And we're going to let that boil down. I just want this to be super hot and kind of get some flavor stuck to the bottom of the pan. Before you throw in the alcohol? Exactly. And then we'll really let these reduce. <clears throat> And finish it with some good butter. It'll be delicious. Nice. 
These shallots are getting nice and translucent and super cooked. You can see they're like melting almost. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna hit it with a little bit of white wine, about a quarter cup to a half a cup. It's gonna boil out there. Kind of hoping for a little more of a boil, but I think it'll be good. And then we're also gonna put a little bit of red, white wine vinegar in there as well. Now we're just gonna let this boil out and kind of reduce. And then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Beautiful. This is going good. All those flavors are coming together. Let's just turn it down and let it simmer. Looks great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Let's see. And uh, at the end, we put a little bit of coconut milk and it really brings that creamy flavor to it. It's delicious. Sweet. So let this boil down. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. Next is prep the corn. It's gonna be for the scallops that we're gonna do after. Okay. So what's your favorite dish to cook? I don't really have one. I like to cook something new pretty much every time I eat. It's pretty good. I like to always try new things. If I like something, I'll make it again and again until I perfect it and then kind of forget about it, like pull it out. Like, so it's about the journey, not the destination. Yeah, exactly. I like to always eat different foods. I don't know, it's funny. For me, it's like a decompression from a super stressful work environment. See, that's what growing <laughs> always was for me. That's, it was always, you know, watering the plants, getting in there, training them. It was, it was always very cathartic. Totally. So this corn has already been boiled. It's pretty hard to find fresh corn at this time of year. Unfortunately, this one's from, I think it's from Mexico or southern, southern U.S. It's nice to have fresher corn. You can do it with uh, canned corn as well. Look at or not canned corn, decent. frozen corn, I should say. A little bit. Now we're ready to go with that. We're gonna fry that into a pan. So all well, this is going here. I think I can put this thing back. Did you say you're gonna fry the corn in a pan? Yeah, we're gonna fry it in a pot and cream it with a little bit of cream and a little bit of parmesan. It's gonna be delicious. So I think what I'm gonna do here is turn this one on in the back. This is where the butter comes into play. We're also gonna prep butter for our bar blanc sauce, if you can look over here. Yeah. It's starting to, re starting to reduce down. Sure. Getting into like more of a thicker goop with the shallots. Yep. So what we want to be prepped for is to have cold butter to add in there in increments. So you want, it's a decent amount of butter in here, so it's not for the faint heart. I think butter is good for you. <laughs> we should put a little rosin in there with it. Oh my god. Oh, we floored. Just to Mark is going to go back everyone. to his kids and go to sleep. Yeah, for two days. <laughs> for two days. Yeah. yeah I don't... I'll get the one piece that it all was sitting on. <laughs> I just put a gram in. Yeah, I think I ate about a gram. Yeah, cannabis, that can, eating cannabis can get you. Yeah, it's I think that. It's nice once in a while. Also I enjoy it. Great sleep. I sleep great all the time. Yeah? Oh, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, I'm a hash smoker, man. <laughs> hash smokers don't not sleep great. <laughs> you if you're not, you're not. There's a difference between a cannabis smoker and a hash smoker for sleep? Well, I think that when I smoked cannabis, it was different from when I started smoking hash, for sure. Yeah? It was just, yeah, for sure. I used to, like, cough and have, like, phlegm in my throat and, like, mm -hmm. cough up little things sometimes. Definitely, like, I, it's more of... This. I've never had that for 20 years of just smoking hash. Wow. I've never had anything like that. And I remember that was 20 years ago. I was only like 28. So I was sure. thinking, I was like, whew, I shouldn't be like coughing up yeah. like phlegm and stuff. Yeah, that that but I was smoking <laughs> major joints, dude. Like a couple of zips of, worth of weed a day. Big three, four, five gram joints, you know? Yeah. Silly amounts. Plus the ceiling was no bueno for me, so. Oh, man. Well, you made a good decision here on the concentrates. Health your work. I yeah. like, I'm, I'm addicted to just having a joint in my life. I appreciate yeah. you having your joint. Some it's of my friends, joint. speaking of which, <laughs> some of my buddies call me the smoking chef. The smoking chef. So I always got a joint in my mouth. <laughs> All right, this is getting pretty good here. If you can see, it's very, very syrupy now. Now we're going to reduce the heat down on here. And we're going to add in a bit of, a bit of cream. You want to get the heat way down because you do not want to boil your cream. So take it off for a sec. Get your cream in there. 
about a third of a cup in there. Good job not boiling it. Yeah. Stir that down. Here, I'll get this shot of like you stirring the pot with the joint in your <laughs> other hand. That'll be our thumbnail for this video. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Butter is going here. For the butter, we're gonna just wait a little bit and get it a little bit brown. It's called a bar noisette. It just kind of has a little extra flavor. It'll add to the corn, and then we'll cream it, and we'll put some cream in there. It'll still, it'll still be a bit chunky too. Beautiful. So now you can see this is turning into a nice medley right here. Yeah. A little bit of salt to it. You just want to keep this constantly stirring and then as the heat is low we're going to just stir in cold chunks of butter a bit at a time and it'll become like a bechamel kind of consistency. Mm. So we'll start with our first one right here. And you really just want to slowly melt it in each chunk at a time kind of whipping it in almost if you can see melting it and whipping it and adding air. We're going to do this a few times until the sauce thickens up. And then we'll just put it on the side and wait for our scallops. Cube number two. All three of us actually, I, I guess we all eat fairly healthy, although Paul did have the, the record this summer. I've never seen anything quite like it. We, we spend a lot of time on this on the road together this summer visiting yep. dispensaries across this great country. We had a we had a blast. We actually. bumped in each other twice. Yeah, on the road, in on different in bus. different provinces. Yeah, and uh, we <laughs> yeah we ate some pretty good food. But Paul ate. How many 72 pizzas? About that. I touched about 72 different pizzas across the In country. In one road trip, if you can imagine. He was having like pizza anxiety, like I need to get pizza. You get pizza I was rolls. sweating marinara sauce, man. I was sweating <laughs> was, marinara it was, sauce. It was some yeah. serious... How long was your trip? It was 65 days. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, 73 different cities and we had 421 stores. But if you can imagine in the okay. 70s of pizza, that means you had pizza uh, almost every single day of your trip. No problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I was thinking it was like a two-week trip, and this motherfucker was eating like six seven or seven pizzas. fucking eight pizzas, ten pizzas yeah. a day or there something. It goes in the next butter. I was like, whoa, how many pizzas did he eat? Yeah, it's starting to... You see it kind of thickening up and getting kind of shiny on us? Definitely thickening up. At the same time, we don't want to forget. See, you now we're starting to get a little bit of a hazelnut color into mm. the, the butter. We're almost there. Good. We're building flavor on the bottom, too, as you can see. We're going to... So called that up. So this soup is coming along quite nice as well. It's getting very This is sick. all like one one meal. We're gonna have a three course all at once, which is hard to do usually, but I think I, I think I can time it right for us. <laughs> if there's anybody that can, it's Matt Merlin the Magic Man. <laughs> Oh, fuck. That's why I don't wear white shirts when I cook anymore. <laughs> I, I had good clothes on last week and I cooked. And just I made, melted butter I made everywhere. These unbelievable turmeric pancakes, gluten free, wheat free. There's, it was with rice flour, corn flour, and turmeric, and uh, and coconut milk. And it makes these crazy pancakes. That ban, I can't even pronounce it. B A N X O. It's a Vietnamese dish, and I had all these chives. Cool. But then I finished the dinner and my I was I had like nice clothes on and my girl's like you ruined all of your clothes <laughs> and I, li I did I I did ruin all my clothes God bless nice. her soul for taking care of her all the stuff Jesus. but I had turmeric everywhere <laughs> I pretty much ruined everything that's why you need a good dry cleaner <laughs> yeah we're getting nice and browned here it's time to hit it with our corn dropping the corn into the butter. I did not see that one coming. That nice brown butter. It's going to be a lot of flavor in there. Now, just to pick up the juices on the bottom, we will add a bit of. Oh, wait, that's the wrong broth. Oh, we're going to have to add some vegetable broth. I think I have some. Yes. <laughs> Not 
lots of broths around. This guy's collecting broth like... I love cooking vegetarian food, but during the week I, I do cook uh, meat as well. <laughs> in, in very good moderation, though. I try not to eat it all the time. I, don't know. I was brought up a vegetarian, so I know what it is. We're going to add a little bit of uh, vegetable stock here and kind of clear off all that stuff that's on the bottom. Get a little bit of liquidity to it. Keep that heat moderately low because we're going to put a little bit of cream in there as well. The cream in the corn. Creamed corn, exactly. Oh. Now we're going to hit it with a bit of salt and pepper. Simmer a little bit while it heats and then we'll just hit it with the emulsifier. We'll be able to do the soup at the same time. Okay, how's our bar blank coming? You can see it's starting to thicken up on us a little bit here. As we add butter a bit at a time. This sauce is gonna be delicious. Hard not to be with the, it's mostly butter. Exactly. Well, it's the shallots, the vinegar, and the wine really give a nice acidity to the to it as well, so it makes it cool. And it's just going to be, we're going to just have a few little dots on the side of it with the, with the scallop and with the corn. I think they're all going to really meld together as flavors. Mm. Emulsification to it. And you don't want to go too much because we still want those beautiful kernels of the corn. Watch nicer to if you can get it deeper. This show should be in 3D. It's, <laughs> it's just flipping everywhere. If you didn't notice on the camera, there is stuff going everywhere. Oh, nice. We're getting a nice thickness here now. Oh, yeah, that looks great. One more stick of butter in there. One more stick of butter. Keep it going. And when it cools, it gets really thick because of all the butter as well, right? Oh, We're yeah. gonna strain out those uh, those uh, shallots. And that'll be a nice smooth sauce, a little cool. It'll be great with the scallops. Well, you know what they say, right? A stick of butter keeps the doctor away, no? Exactly. That's what they tell me. I'm pretty sure that's place. what it is, yeah. <laughs> That sounds like a Quebec motto. <laughs> um, okay, well this is cream, we'll put it in the back here. Let it heat up and kind of go together. And we'll take care of this. Um, where's my tongs? From there, we're gonna not forget our bay leaves before we emulsify this. Take the bay leaves out. Very important. They're not poisonous or anything. No, but, but they're, they're super sharp. brutal texture. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't think like you digest them very Bay well. leaves chunks in your meals. We're back at it. All right, this thing is thickening up pretty good for the barbecue sauce. Let's straight out the shallots. Have our little saucy here. Ooh, filtering it right through here. Look at this. It's great. You are not joking about how how smooth that silky that sauce is going to be. Oh yeah. And when it cools just a little bit, it's going to get really thick. I wonder if I have a little bit of truffle oil to add in there. Too. Too. A little truffle oil, right? Eh? Yeah. And so do you use a spoon sometimes to mesh that Yeah, towel? a little bit. Just to sort of squeeze. You can tell it is drier than you think, hey? Eh? Yeah. Gravity does most of it for you. Totally. Oh, wow. <laughs> Little volute sauce there, eh? Yeah, really nice. All right. Put my joint out. You can see it. It's mm -hmm. getting a nice consistency there. Give a little taste. A little Lion's Bay water. A little Lion's Bay water. Fresh from the mountains.
Right off the mountain. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll emulsify this thing. Get you a little. We might want to get more. This thing is looking like a puree at the moment. <laughs> Looks awesome. When you roast the garlic. When you roast the garlic and you roast the ginger together, it really works well. Um, I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit. We've got a pretty good consistency here. Oh, it looks amazing, man. Now we're going to add a little bit of coconut milk to it. I like this brand, uh, Arroy D. I don't know. It's, it always tastes pretty good. Did you know in the future what we'll have to do is we'll have to get um, the, our guests and the, the sous chefs, like... Mo like short training seminar before we film because totally. there's all sorts of things he could be doing he for you right, right now. Yeah. yeah, right. But yeah. it's the timing, right? You're doing you. I just you only know time. when you need it. Exactly. So that's the tricky part. So that whole can of in there goes in there. It's going to oh get extremely God. creamy. You just diluted the color so nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's like the color of spring <laughs> or fall, I should say. Sorry. The color of fall. Butternut squash is like a very fall time. So. Yeah, it's one of our favorites at home. Never had one before. You've never had a know. butternut squash soup. I nope. forgot. You don't like eat most, much vegetables. Yeah, you? like most things you cook, I have not eaten it before. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one, man. I'm going to put butter in the soup. Thick it up? No, it just makes it a nice silkiness, right? Mm-hmm. You'll see it gets a nice shine to it. You know what, this can use a little bit of that. Truffle oil? Oh. A little bit of the soup that we talked about last time. Oh, yeah, a tiny little bit of herb spicy. Yeah. There we go. I would say a little bit of salt as well. But you can really taste the ginger in the soup. It's delicious. Season it all up. You want to grab a spoon there, Paul, for her? Give Marcus a try. You want to try it too, Paul? Grab, grab yeah. another spoon here. Oh. Slice to it. Dude, that is on point. Yeah. Are you kidding Ginger me? That's great. Oh, that is delicious. delicious that flavor. is great. And we didn't really do that much spicing besides the initial one when we put. Dude, it if he spiced it slightly different, it would be a dal. <laughs> it, it tastes like it. It tastes like a, a butternut oh, dal. Smokes, hey? Yeah, it's not too far off. It's not too no. far off. And I think the lentils could be a good the, the, addition. Exactly. To the soup. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. We we'll got uh, these the croutons in here. I put a little salt, slice them on an angle. Put a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna put them in the oven at our favorite number, 420. 420 degrees in the go. go. While that happens, I think that this is ready, that's ready. Let's get the pan hot for the scallops. Let's get the pan hot for the scallops. Fun Said the yeah. scallops. <laughs> Where they at? Make sure you don't fuck up the risotto. No risotto this time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's heating. We've got to prep the scallops at the same time, which uh, I'll show you guys how to do. Find where I put them. I think they're up to the left right and right above here. your tomatoes. Underneath our veggie can't right really see, but and above the tomatoes? Yeah, exactly. Nice. All right, so uh, it's really important to prep your scallops. I don't know if everybody knows this, but there's a little membrane around a scallop, like a little muscle that you have to take off when you get them, because that little muscle is super chewy. So I'm just going to wash that. Man, I wonder if that muscle in that little creature ever thought there would be a group of beings that would classify that muscle as chewy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> that's holy that's no shit. Good. That's a real existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I got this chewy muscle. Do these, Paul? You want, just sure. Give your hands a wash too. If only scallops like evolved to have more of that muscle, maybe humans would leave them the fuck alone. <laughs> you guys just all around. It. So well, if you want to see how it's it thinking is. like that, we can thank for delicious tasting weed. There you go. For real. Okay, so you know what? Or no, this one does. No. So this sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Luckily, on this nice beauty one, we don't have it. So okay, here's a perfect example. If you can see right here, there's an extra muscle that you can see that's attached here. Oh, yeah. And you kind of just peel that guy right off, and then you have your scallop. And you so this one's them, good, right? That one's good, exactly. So you want to put them on a nice dry towel because you want them padded dry that for, one has for the it. technique yeah. that we're going to be doing. Oh, that's true. Right? I kind of feel like I'm peeling off the uh, eye on a ribeye. <laughs> it is kind of the, that way. Huh? Yeah. And that last one has one, too. Yeah, before I realized this, every time I made scallops, and especially when you make like a ceviche or something. didn't cook properly. Yeah, and when you make a ceviche, you know that chewy part of a, oh. of a scallop in ceviche that everyone is like, ugh, what is this? <laughs> that. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm just gonna wash my hands again. A favorite here, and we'll yep. drain out the beet mix that we had here. Now we've kind of let it sit together, and as you can see, there's a lot of juice left in the bottom of here. Ooh. It'll spill out all over the plate. So what I like to do is we got the second one here, grab a little strainer, and then just put all that beet in there, and then press it down so that we can get all the liquid out of there. Oh, we'll build our plates for our beet tartare dish. Okay. So I like to do it with a, a round mold. I'll start with oh, like okay. that. Oh, okay, get a little mold there. Exactly. And then we're gonna start with the avocado. Kind of push it down to the bottom there and really nice distribution. Now we're gonna grab our beet mix here. Paul, you're going a little too crazy over here. Uh, so is this stuff already strained is what, you're, what that is? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, you don't have to go too hardcore. I just wanted to get a little bit of the juice out so it didn't go all over the plate. I wasn't sure what kind of pressure you wanted at the plates. No stress, brother. I love it. So here, now we're going to add some beet in there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty baked. <laughs> Sweet. We this is the best the time we yet. Hit we How, definitely there, will hit a rip before we do it. Hey, Paul, oh. you want to know what is my favorite sous chefs do? Uh -huh. Is line up dabs while I'm cooking. It's the best thing ever. Gord dabs. Gord dabs it is. Okay, so now that one's ready. We're going to slide this off. Boom. Now we'll give it a quick wash. Dude. Holy Christ, dude. That looks so good. Great colors, just, you've got it right in the sun, you couldn't have had it in a better place to share with everyone, you know, yeah, that, the, a... the reveal was really good. And then while, that, sorry, what did you say? While that's, while these are, I'm making these, I'm going to have a rip. Dude, look at that mustache. <laughs> Happy Halloween, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Gold. We're also gonna roast a few pine nuts here. Okay. So this is always tricky. You don't want to burn those. Yeah. Roasting pine nuts and burning them to a crisp is a fine line. It's a very fine line. Have you? Would you say that? Something I learned <laughs> this week though is that a dry roast is much easier to, to, to handle. So we're gonna have no oil. And we're just gonna dry roast. In a it. cool pan. In a cool pan. We're gonna or put pot. it at a low heat. It's not gonna take very long, but. Just gravy, and they're not going to burn before that nutty flavor kind of comes out. Perfect. So we'll just finish these up real quick. Dude, that just looks so nice with the sun on it. Now I'm blocking the sun, but here we've had about a month of rain, and it's nice to have a few days of sun. That's no? so nice. The two colors 
are a banger just alone. Yeah, totally. Then add the, the textures. Well, then then you add the textures and the flavors. It's a triple threat. Totally. Hey, Paul, would you mind checking on the croutons in the oven? Hard, and then it pulls out nice and straight there. And number three. You just want to make sure when you do it with the beets that you push it down really hard, otherwise it, well not really hard, but like with a bit of pressure, that way the mold comes out nice and easy and you don't get beets all over and your I plate. And I see you tap in the edges too. Yeah, exactly. You want to really push that down, make a nice flat surface on there inside. I don't think you messed it up. <laughs> okay, now we got our three dishes there. Just pulled out the croutons? Or the... Just pulled out the croutons, they're nice and brown. Oh, they look great. Now we can just let these rest a little bit while we get the rest of the, the meal ready. These you can kind of smell a little bit the pine nutty flavor coming out. They're getting a little yeah, brown down the edges. they were dry roasting, yeah? Yeah, dry roasting, a little pine nut flavor. It takes, you know, you really get the flavor out of here before burning them. If you put oil, they'll burn before you get the flavor out. Okay. Okay, we got a little preparation going on here. This is a little behind the scenes B-roll. It may make it into the show, it may not. The old B-roll. Set up the table oh, inside since shit. it's so nice. Yeah, dude. Dude, how about that? Let's give them a little shot of the glacier across the way. Yes, seriously. Winter is here from the mountains. I gotta get my drone. We would have done a drone video. I did let everyone know that the drone is gonna be back. It's coming back, the battery's ordered. It's the top of Anvil Island that we're looking at right now. I went to Squamish the other day, and there is faces that you can ride right now. Oh yeah, Whistler has like three meters of snow. I was in Squamish the other day too. Yeah. All right, let's see if we have enough time to do another quick little dabaroo. Here. See, so watching Merlin get a dab made me want to take a dab. Nice little another cold start dab. This is not the best dabber for dropping cold starts in, but I didn't bring any of my gear. So I'm blessed to have access to what I have. Give it a cold start. Woo! That was tasty. Three perfect low temp dabs right there. Well, perfect dabs. Get ready for some perfect meals. I love that you guys have both been in the background of this little <laughs> clip. Yeah, just we can come back here and <coughs> we can get this one to the table. Well, I'm gonna so clean this. Table it's all nice, set up. Oh yeah. All right, well, I'll come set up the camera over there. Let's get in the banger. Get the tripod here. Probably have to go get my other battery because this one looks like it's almost done. Oh, yeah. yeah. See how the nuts are almost roasted here? The nuts are roasted. Look at that. Dry roast, nice brown color on them. Looks amazing. Looks amazing. So, do we just grab these nuts and put them on there? No, it's great. <laughs> Not yet. So how am I going to set this camera up? Well, you, you want to finish the cook first? Oh, sure, absolutely. That's a good idea. 
All right, we got our pine nuts cooling over next to our tartare. Now the next step here is get our, our pan super hot for the scallops, which is the final part of our dish. Everything's warm, everything's ready. We're prepped, plates are made. I think we're getting to good heat here. We're gonna add a little bit of grapeseed oil. It's a lot higher temperature. I want to de not too, too much, but just to coat it right. Wait a sec. Get a little out? Yeah. Too just much. To coat yeah, just want to get the coat there. Okay. okay, now we're getting hot there. Let's get our scallops that we prepped earlier that are super nice from the market down the road here. You want a nice padded dry. A little bit of paper towel on there. That way we get a really good sear. You can kind of round them out. So now we got this high temp here. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So when you put them down, this is the most crucial part for the good sear, is you want to get them down and really place them and push them down firm so that it gets a nice crust on it. Okay. I like to do the widest side down first because it's a nice presentation on the, mm -hmm. on the top after. Now for me, I know that my pan is hottest over here, so I concentrate mine right now. With a gas grill, you wouldn't really feel that same hot spot. Well, I, I imagine there's hot spots on, on gas grills. Probably well. would be different for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's where a good pan comes in, you know, distributes that heat evenly. 100%. But even then, there's still a hot spot in that yeah. pan, for sure. Definitely cast iron is the way to help on that, for sure. Let those things fry out. Now, the whole key to this thing is you want this first sear at the high heat with the oil. And once those are seared, when you flip them, you, you essentially want to start hitting it with butter and basting it as you go. Okay. Now that I think about it, just so that it's a little bit better, we're going to add garlic into the bottom of that pan as well. It's going to make it super tasty butter that's going on top of garlic out. We'll keep those sitting on the side right here. Warm with our cubes of butter. Now these, you can tell underneath, it's starting to get a pretty good yeah, little see browning that. sear on there. I want to get some tongs. Hey Paul, while we do that, you want to just help out? We can grab those three bowls right over there. Cool. Everything we need is, there we go. So just guys, here, place them all, all three of them, and place it in so you don't splash it everywhere else. Dude, I knew you were going to say, I was like, <laughs> I wonder if he'll pass on his level of chef OCD. Of it does make all the difference in the world if you drop a drop on the side of the if bowl, looks, right? You, you eat with your eyes. Now look at this. That's like, that's just what you want it to look like. Bomber. Now we get a nice sear on all of these. Oh, look at that. Oh, it was in the spot. And you'll see they kind of like stick in place when you flip them back over. This is when we hit our garlic down in the corner. Start hitting it with a bit of butter. Oh, really a lot less soup than that. You're getting a little bit of flavor in there. Now we want to just have tilt your pan up like this as they're frying. And just literally spoon butter, garlicky butter all over those scallops for them to finish. Mmm. That looks so real good. Now get that garlic right up in there. You really want to do this at very high heats so that it really gets that good sear. When you go down, you can get a little more heat going back to it, and then you can pull it back up. You don't want to do this too long, about two minutes aside, probably at the moment. Okay. You can see all that lactose foaming up, but it smells so garlicky good. And the butter pretty much bastes and cooks the scallop itself, right? Okay, these are getting pretty close to ready. We're just gonna let this rest for 
two seconds in that pan and let them finish off. Well, I grab something to hold them in while we wait to plate. We want a little bit of paper towel to hold that off. We have our nice barbed land sauce that is really kind of reduced down and is super nice. Um, at the same time, we will set up plating over here as well for a scallop. So we'll have three plating areas, if you guys can see right now. Awesome. We're going crazy today. Yeah, you do. And yeah, you are. And yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, here we go. These are all ready to go. Okay, now it's going to be plating time. So we'll start with our, we'll start with the scallops. Paul's wonderfully done our soups oh, over here. Oh, wonderful. Didn't mess up at all. And Beautiful. We're gonna Good start, job, Paul. Good job. <laughs> we're going to start with the corn for the, for the scallops. So we'll put a little dollop on each one here. I like to make little piles first to kind of measure exactly how much corn we have each. You want to be nice and generous on the corn. It's delicious. You can see that like burnt butter or browned butter, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, color of it. And we'll just give it a quick little swipe down. Okay. Just make two nice little dollops there on the side. This is when it comes in handy to be baked to do this. You kind of take your time. <laughs> totally. Now we'll grab our scallops. You missed the public how gangster these look. Oh, that looks spectacular. Just in that butter, white butter sauce. It really has thickened up as a cool down. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be delicious. And then for that a little smells bit of color, incredible. get a little bit of parsley on there. As well, over here, we're going to put parsley on all of our soups. I think I got a little more left here. I like to throw it around. All right, now let's finish our, let's finish these. We'll put a little bit of pine nut, roasted pine nuts on the top of them. And then we're going to grab bit of these alfalfa sprouts. Just build a tiny little nest there. Tiny little nest there. Now we'll grab a little bit of olive oil. This is infused with garlic. A little bit of this 12 year old vinegar. 12 year old vinegar, right? Yeah. There's not very much left, so. Okay, we're bit. still getting it. Yeah. Little it's just for a little end. touch. It's super sweet, it's delicious. I'll just add some toasts to here. A little for scooping it up. Before. Exactly. Finely baked. Finely baked. Like us. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So good. You know what? I think we're going to put this up front. I like it. So ridiculous, dude. <laughs> There we go. Let's set up the chairs here. My goodness, dude. Like, honestly. Yeah. This is so ridiculously gnarly. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. I don't so even know where to start. Uh, 
I guess, you know what? You should start by announcing what each dish is, and then yeah. we'll just gobble it up. So we got uh, pan-seared scallops with a bar blanc and a creamed corn with a bar and lisette. And then we have uh, our butternut uh, squash roasted soup with garlic and ginger. Yep. And then our beet tartare with roasted pine nuts, avocado, and uh, some sprouts and vinegar and oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just absurd and ridiculous on all levels, but why don't we take a bite of each sure. kind of thing here, and as we do, we'll let you know what we think. I think you know what we're going to think, but... Oh my goodness. They just fall apart. The scallop yeah. just fell apart. The trick is to get up another corn. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> that bar glass is amazing. The whole thing is really quite incredible. I love the sweet with the corn. Yeah, the sweet with the corn. And the, and the texture of the corn is nice too because everything else is so buttery smooth. Mm -hmm. The contrast plays really well together. You don't need teeth <laughs> for these uh, scallops. scallops. You really don't. Mm. Yeah, this is definitely loud. <laughs> this moment, I just about brushed the whole thing. I, I know. Just like, Let's have a bite of uh, each thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit of each thing mm -hmm. before we turn off the camera. That was spectacular. I could have crushed that like nonstop. Soup has. It's hard to put it away right now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> The way the aftertaste of that plays with this, yeah, yeah it oh, kind of works so together. good. And the sh just the creaminess of this, yeah, the texture of it is absolutely silky. Mm. With the odd, the ginger. odd little chunk of pure yeah. squash or ginger, yeah. or garlic. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. These are all ridiculous dishes. Yeah. This is such a, a sweet looking dish as well as clearly being delicious with the 12 year vinegar <laughs> croutons as your kind of fork, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Again, that contrast in texture is just impeccable. Seems to be a, a really good theme working through today. Thumbs up for me. Everything's awesome, dude. Would you give it six stars? <laughs> I'd definitely give it six stars. There you go. That's a, six, that's a 90 micron full melt meal right there. Right oh, there. Yeah. That's the full melt clear that's dome. The full neck clear dome right there. It's just Let's try it. Try, try, uh, try going that zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Purity. Excellence achieved. Great way for people who have a hard time with avocado to go into it to get past it. Yeah, totally. really, really. That's yeah, really a different of... dish. It's fresh, eh? Mm -hmm. With the horseradish, gives it a little pungent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's like a spring dish for sure. And the capers is good. The salty. Well, knocked it out of the park once again. Merle. I feel like you pulled a caper on my taste buds. <laughs> Dude, Paul, super pleasure having yeah, you hanging out with for us. Lunch. Oh, it was an absolute honor. I say, with the amount of time and energy that Merlin put into this, uh, we owe it to him now to focus our attentions on this meal. Thanks everybody for watching. The recipe will be in the description, and uh, I'll see you next week uh, cooking with Merlin. Have a good week. Brush mode. That was fun, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Must brush food. <laughs>